we have our first ever Music Innovation Prize here at Web Summit. Over the next 30 minutes, you're going to hear from five cutting edge music startups who will showcase their company and what they do. Each one has been hand selected to be here at Web Summit today to give you a snapshot into some of the most innovative, disruptive startups in the music scene today. Each one will deliver a five minute talk to give you and our judges a flavor of what they do. Judging the competition, we have Christopher Leacock and Isabel Garvey from Abbey Road Studios. First on stage is a company who are shaping the future of live music. They feature on the current Elton John World Tour. So please welcome to the stage, co-founder and CTO of Peaks, Graham Tal. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Graham Toll. Uh, I'm the inventor, co-founder, and the CTO for my sins for Peaks, which is an augmented audio system designed to enhance the customer audio experience at live music events. The ideas behind Peaks were born from my own passion for live music, both as a fan and as a musician, um, and to have some personal control uh, and guarantees, actually, over the sound quality, wherever the seat is that I'm going to occupy for the show. My experiences are common uh, to many music fans, uh, and there is some research showing that up to a third of them will leave a show disappointed with the sound quality uh, and reporting that that impacted negatively on their impression of the show. Um, I think the spy scales probably won't be the first and they won't be the last to suffer those problems. So to fix this problem, we developed a wearable technology Here's one I provided earlier. Um, and our ambition uh, with that uh, was to create a product that could infinitely scale to the entire stadium, especially to those people uh, colloquially in the nosebleed seats up at the top of the, uh, the venue, uh, where sound can often be a big issue. And we've designed a product that maintains the vital immersive connection um, with the high energy live sound which simultaneously, um, well, whilst simultaneously providing this high definition, uh, high fidelity um, uh, sound that's often lost in big concert halls. Uh, this presented its own unique challenges because you've now got two sources of sound, one coming here and one coming from the speaker systems. I'll, I'll explain how we dealt with that in a moment. Uh, we've also designed uh, peaks with a battery capable of surviving the longest show you're likely to go to. Um, without the risk of draining your precious phone battery. Um, the solution we've produced gives personal control of the audio mix to the fans using a Peaks receiver paired with a companion app, which is free on iOS and Android. So beyond the clear audio improvements, Peaks also provides a communication channel between the fan and artists during Oh, sorry, before the show, during the show, and after the show. And there are many ways that that can create new revenue um, for the artist uh, and the industry at large. Peaks is a technology really where hearing is believing, and I'll demonstrate it in just a moment. Um, but before I do that, I, I just want to spend a moment on the challenges we faced in getting these two sound sources synchronized. Um, the Peaks digital audio signal is transmitted uh, into the venue using a proprietary network of transmitters which deliver the radio signal thereabouts at the speed of light. Uh, of course, the PA system is naturally sending an audio wave into the room at the speed of sound, and these two are of orders of magnitude in difference. So we had to deal with that and bridge the chasm uh, and create something that dynamically adjusts the delay wherever the user is in the auditorium. So there's no user involved activity to make that happen. So let's take an example. If you're 40 meters from the PA or the stage, 
around about 160 milliseconds is the time it will take for the sound waves to come from the speaker and reach your ears. Of course, our signal has already reached the uh, peak's receiver. So we have to find a way to delay that. Um, it's probably easiest to explain why that was essential by playing a couple of clips. The first is the chaos that if you don't deal with that problem would ensue. And then I'll follow that with... And now the clarity that comes by synchronizing the two sources. So this essential technology allows Peaks users to move freely around the venue without even knowing that any of this clever signal processing is happening in the background. Um, so pulling this all together, Peaks removes the problem of often challenging sound quality in live music venues and simultaneously maintains this perfect audio synchronization wherever the user is located. Um, let's see and hear what Peaks does um, in action. Definitely a bright future for peaks, yeah. See you on the road. Well, that was the fastest five minutes, <laughs> and I've probably got a couple of minutes left, but I'm time up. So thank you very much for that. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, thanks for your attention. Oh, sorry. Next, next on stage, we have a company who is offering a never-seen-before way to translate your musical ideas into reality by using the one instrument you've been practicing since birth, your voice. Please welcome co-founder and CEO of Voclia, George Wright. Okay, hi. Um, I'm George from, uh, from Voclia. I'm not actually going to give you a business pitch today. Uh, if you are interested in, in any of that, the kind of sales, marketing, all that kind of stuff, please come and talk to me about it afterwards. Um, but I'm actually going to take these five minutes to talk to you about the future of musical creativity uh, and musical creative tools. Um, and what better way to start that? Um, Click is not working, but if you can move on to the next, there we go. What better way to start that than with the voice? It's our built-in tool for audio expression. Uh, it's the instrument that comes packaged with every human. Uh, and it's incredibly powerful and incredibly nuanced. It's also the most direct route from brain to music. Um, so if we've got this amazing instrument, if everyone's got this amazing instrument, why, since the dawn of time, have we been creating and inventing new musical instruments? And so obviously this is my area, so I've been thinking about it a lot, uh, and I've whittled it down to kind of two main things. So I think the first thing is because existing tools don't, aren't necessarily capable of a certain functionality. So for example, if you want to play a chord, you can't sing that. You could be in a close vocal harmony group, or you invent an instrument that can play two or more notes at once. The second driver is to do with tonality. So I can do an impression of a brass instrument, 
I'm quite proud of my brass instrument, but it doesn't matter how much I practice it, it's still never going to sound identical to a trombone. If I want a trombone sound, I've got to invent a trombone. And so these two things combined with um, the human nature for inventiveness have led there to be thousands, if not millions of new instruments created, which is absolutely fantastic. But with it, there is a slight cost. And that is with all this increased uh, levels of expression and tonality, there's also increased complexity. It's difficult to do. There's extra links in the chain between the brain and the music. And so in, in when we look at the companies that are working today on this problem, um, we see that uh, they're still driven by the same thing. So you've got, we already had Roland on earlier from, from Roly, um, and people like uh, Imogen Heap and Mimu Gloves, they're still driven by this, how can we do things differently? How can we express things in a different way? Companies like Spitfire Audio that are making, um, still improving things in tonality and putting out new stuff. But there's this new driving factor as well, and that's how can we make it more direct? How can we make it more intuitive? And the future of that is going to be driven by machine learning. Of course, it's the, uh, it's the way that tools, the way that the technology can actually have intuition brought to it. Now, it's a very big conversation about machine learning and music that I won't dive into right now. But I will say it could be used as a weapon or it can be used as a tool. And at Vocalia Music, we choose to use it as a tool. You'll be pleased to know. Um, and what we've done is go back to the voice because we're thinking we've got this amazing um, instrument built in. We've all been practicing it since birth and it's very capable of all sorts of different nuances. We know it's got some limitations. There's tonal limitations. There's functions that the voice can't do. But what if we could create some kind of audio engine, an artificial intelligence audio engine that could understand the intention of our voice so that we could control all of these different sounds, so that we could do all of these different functionalities? And what if we could do it absolutely live so that you still have this direct connection between uh, the brain and the music instantly just like that. And so that's what we've been focused on. And I've got a little demo of uh, our product here. It's called the Double Studio Kit. And it's a virtual MIDI controller. So um, I don't know how much everyone knows about MIDI, but basically you can use it with any music making software. Um, normally, if you wanted to lay down a melody, you might play notes on a keyboard. Uh, you maybe have to play chords. If you don't know how to play piano, that's obviously a challenge. When it comes to using doubler, I can just do this with my voice. So if I hum a kind of like a D, 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 let me just turn this off one second, um, then doubler's going to take that D. You probably here I've got, um, I've actually got a, a chord function on there as well. And it's also not just the pitch that I sing, but the way that I sing it. So there I'm going D, D. But what if I change it to be more like an ooh or an ah? So I can use all these different vocal nuances, but still achieving um, amazing different tonal qualities and all the different instruments. Um, but it also is, it's learnt my voice, so it also recognizes percussive sounds. So if I make a kind of Um, so I can very quickly lay down drum beats, I can very quickly lay down melodies, I can control effects, and I can do it all using our built-in tool for musical creativity, the voice. Now that is my time up, so I will stop. But if you want to have a go at the demo uh, or contact me, we've got a booth, and this is my email address. Thank you very much. Our next startup claims, since music has become a consumer good, noise is everywhere, and music, nowhere. And that's why they created a smart, portable music box that is guaranteed to give you goosebumps. Here to tell us more is co-founder of OW1 Audio, Phil Rio. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to tell you about music. Everyone on the planet loves music. 
And this buddy over here is it. I want to share with you a picture, a picture of music. This picture, the kiss from Klimt. You see the pixels? This is the quality of Napster in 2001, a time when music was taking ages to download an album. It was taking hours. Fortunately, communication technology has improved, and we have seen streaming platform burgeoning. Nowadays, 4G and high-speed DSL are capable to carry without any issue lossless format music. So basically, in other terms, the tubes for, telecommuni for telecommunication are not a limit anymore to the data flow for music. So we're good with streaming logistics. The question is, what do we do with it? The last mile of music is the place where the data flow magically transforms into an emotional musical experience. A music lover is ready to pay extra money for high quality streaming, uh, streaming services if and only he or her, he or her can hear the difference on his own system. The good news, millennials love music. They listen more than two hours per day to audio and music. And it's part of their life. The music, they have so many different usage that it's, an, it's an between them, it's inside them. So that's very good news. The problem is when we look at the market, we see on the market two very different species of audio system. On one hand, we have the very popular mobile, very often operated via Bluetooth systems, and we have the residential audio. Of course, residential audio has a strong edge on sound quality. But when we look at the usage, it reverses because mobile audio inherits from the capabilities of the smartphone, while residential has still one usage, music listening. I'm Phil Brio, the co-founder of O1 Audio. First come first, we love music, and we want to develop systems for people who like us, love to feel the emotions that is contained in the music. So we develop platforms that are capable to deliver quality equivalent to a very expensive hi-fi system while keeping and expanding the usage, all that embedded in a unique product. Our studies and focus group have shown that millennials who love music are often frustrated by their own system, the quality, the audio quality of their own system. In the same time, they don't want to compromise on usage. They have a very special relationship with their audio object and a budget for their passion that is well under 1,000 euro. We provide them a solution to upgrade their system while keeping the usage at an affordable price. Our first product is this one, smart speaker operated on battery that received an award at the CES. It's easy to carry, no wire, 1.5 kilo, and it streams any source, music, podcast, radios. So what's next? Well, at the moment, we're working on the launch of this product, which will take place in nine months after we have concluded our seed round. So if you are an investor who truly believes that everyone on earth deserves good sound and therefore good music, I invite you to speak with me off stage because we have a mission to accomplish together. Thank you very much.
Our next startup is a music interaction network for music industry professionals and music lovers. They simplify and upgrade the music industry process, uniting and optimizing all the necessary elements for successful and risk-free business. Please welcome to the stage co-founder of show for me Karen Chiftalarian. Hi, everyone here. I'm happy to be here. It's not so much time we have to explain everything about Show For Me Music Interaction Network, but I will try. So let's start. So everyone remembers the first kiss. I'm sure about that. Everyone remembers first love, first favorite band. It's all emotions. And first concerts, of course. You were, you were attending with your friends. So it's all emotions, and the, in the root of show for me is emotion. So, but we still have many problems in the mu music industry. The three main problems we have in music industry is with concerts, with music, recorded music, and with uh, fan bases. So regarding concerts, it's loss-making events. It's understandable, and it's sad that Three of five events in the world are loss-making. 95% of all ticket sales generated by only 5% of musicians. It's music, low streaming payouts. It's understandable. Artists even cannot make living of what they earn from streaming services. And of course, you don't have and enough information about your fan base. So show for me solves everything. And in the root of everything is an artist club. It's a set of real, cool, and very necessary tools that provides unique opportunities to monetize and to make your music career and music business more successful and with higher profits, which is very important for musicians nowadays. So let's start from Artist Club. Artist Club is a communication, direct communication between fans and artists. Fans can get unique uh, discounts uh, for merchandise, unique discounts for tickets, private events, invitations, music, and many more things. And from on other side, artists get everything they need to run their business successfully. So now we have concert crowdfunding model. It's on-demand concerts, no empty seats on your concerts, no loss-making events. It's a crucial part for all musicians, and if you're a musician, you will understand what I'm speaking about. And of course, we have amazing and unique, innovative one dollar or one pound or one euro annual subscription for a specific artist and mathematically proved that one dollar a year from one true fan it makes you more money as a record label or artist or diy artist than you will get on any music streaming platform in the world right now. And in order to generate $1,000 on music, from music streaming services, you need approximately 300,000 streams. At the same time, on show for me you need only 1,000 fans. So just calculate and you will understand everything. Music per sales, it's a good pass. We create a pass for up and coming and new artists to get their music to the audience. It's very important for them because only 98% of all musicians stay on this card, but they are doing really cool music. Sometimes it's better than top stars, and not sometimes, I would say. Then direct interaction, AI-driven direct interaction. And you, as a fan, will get everything from your feed, starting from music, interviews, discounts, tickets, everything in one place and i think it's really cool then of course we have amazing stats you will always know who are your fans you will communicate with your fans you 
you can reach your fans. You will not pay money to get to your fans and to inform your fans. And it's a crucial point also. It's your capital. It's not a capital of someone else. So, show for me is a really big ecosystem. I don't have much time. My time is run, though, uh, to explain all other features. But I think that you have to visit and check show for me with us. And let's make the music great again. Thank you very much. last company featuring on our Music Innovation Prize today is the Portuguese startup Sound Particles. Sound Particles is a software for sound design capable of generating thousands and even millions of sounds in a virtual 3D audio world. This immersive audio application will enable you to create highly complex sounds on the fly, which will enable you to design sound better and faster than ever. Please welcome to the stage co-founder Nuno Fonseca. Hi everyone. Uh, computer graphics was probably the biggest revolution that we have in the entertainment industry over the last 50 years. From animation to visual effects, from video games to VR. But now imagine if you could use the same technology, not for image, but for sound. Because that's exactly what we do at Sound Particles. For instance, when it comes to image, you usually have 2D and 3D image software, but when it comes to sound, essentially all existing audio software tends to use a 2D approach. You are mixing sounds on top of sounds. And yes, they may even have some 3D features the same way that you can go to Photoshop and have a 3D filter there, but it's not natively a 3D approach. You don't have a microphone that moves around a 3D space, all of those. So essentially what we have done with sound particles was to actually create a new kind of software. Because sound particles is a 3D software that brings the power of computer graphics into the sound world and allow you to create things that would simply be impossible to do in any other way. For instance, creating thousands of sounds around you with only a few clicks. And by doing this, you simply unleash the creativity of all the sound artists over there and allow them to create amazing things. Doesn't matter if they are an Hollywood studio or a simple garage band. And with only a few clicks, you can easily create things like this one. Sound particles started in the movie industry, where our software is currently being used in all major Hollywood studios. For instance, Game of Thrones have used our software to create the sound of the epic battles of the last season. Or for instance, Disney that is using sound particles to create all the magic sounds of Maleficent or Ralph Breaks the Internet. And many others, we have Aquaman, we have Ready Play Run from Spielberg and others. And people are also using sound particles for video games. and theater and part and VR and even some are using them for machine learning. But now it's time for music. And with the new music features, we simply cannot wait to listen all the amazing things that the musicians are going to do with our technology. I don't know if they are going to use songs with 100 drummers, if they are going to create other things like 2,000 flying violins, or eventually they can simply create a single piano with each note simply floating around you. But with all of this, and for Portugal, we welcome you to the wonderful world of sound particles.
That's it for our morning session, and thanks to our five startups for being here with us today at Web Summit. Our judges will deliberate and pick a winner who will receive exhibition space at our Toronto event collision, which happens in June 2020. We will announce the winner just before our afternoon programming at 2 p.m., when we will be talking to the music legend Jean-Michel Jarre. See you then, and thank you for being with us today. Bye-bye.